This is a series looking at four ways we can improve the quality of our writing. In this video, we're looking at clarity. Clarity is one of the most important things in good writing. If your writing isn't clear, even if it sounds good, fancy or sophisticated, it's not going to be effective. So clarity is one of the key aspects here that relates to these three other areas. For each video, we've been looking at things that detract from and enhance the quality of our writing. And when we look at clarity, there's four different areas coded D1, D2, D3 and D4. Let's have a look in greater detail. D1 talks about the overall purpose of the writing. Why are you writing this? What are you trying to say? And is it consistent? This is a big picture thing because at the end of the day, you want your message to come through. And we want to make sure that there's consistency in the message that you're getting across for all of the different parts of your writing. If you've received D1 as an area of improvement, it might mean that there's inconsistency in your writing. Let's look at this example. A first thing here is that there's no title to it. And that might seem like a really silly little thing, but in any piece of writing, if we've got no title, straight away we're not quite sure what the purpose or direction of this piece of writing is. So you may have received a D1 note just for not having a title. Let's look at this text. Chewing gum causes teeth to rot. It has a lot of sugar in it and comes in many different flavours. Now straight away the purpose of this isn't necessarily clear. Chewing gum causes teeth to rot seems like it's a bad thing. So we get this sense that maybe this piece of writing is talking about all the bad things to do with chewing gum. It has a lot of sugar in it. Well, again, that seems like a pretty bad thing, so I guess that's on par. But straight away it says it comes in many different flavours. Now, in saying that it comes in many different flavours, are you arguing that chewing gum is a bad thing? Because that sounds like maybe it's a good thing. So the direction of where you are actually going with this discussion isn't clear. Because of how expensive gum has become, people aren't buying as much. Does the price of gum have anything to do with whether it's a good thing or a bad thing? What's the overall purpose that we're trying to achieve in this? Sometimes our writing can read just like this. It feels a little bit all over the place and one sentence seems to contradict or counteract the other. When this happens, you're likely to see D1 notes on your writing. You can resolve this by trying to think about how the information that you're putting forward connects and making sure it's clear and consistent throughout. As an example of how we could have improved this writing, first of all, we've put a title in place saying chewing gum should be banned. So straight away, I know the purpose of what I'm reading before I've even hit the main text. Chewing gum causes a number of health and environmental problems. So straight away, I've orientated this sentence to show that I'm exploring problems. It's high sugar content can be damaging to teeth. So the fact that it's high sugar content is damaging reinforces the health problems that were talked about in the previous sentence. It's really important when we're writing particularly extended pieces that each sentence complements the overall purpose of the writing. We now move on to D2. There's a lot of D2s in student writing. And here we're talking about the use of pronouns and connectives and how they can detract from clarity. In this case, I want you to think about who or what you are talking about in each sentence. Are your use of pronouns clear, consistent and accurate? For reference, a pronoun is a word like I, me, my, they or this that refers to a noun that you've mentioned earlier on in the piece. Connectives are also part of this because when we're connecting sentences together, we often refer to things that might have happened in a previous sentence or section of the text. So we need to make sure these are accurate and clear. Let's look at some examples. The school should get rid of uniform. Straight away, when you say the school, it's not necessarily clear what school. It could be any school and the context isn't necessarily clear. So you could receive a D2 for being too vague straight away. The rest of this sentence reads, the school should get rid of uniform because they make people unhappy. Now when you say they in this sentence, it's not clear whether you're talking about the school, which is the opening function of the sentence, or the uniform, which is the most recent thing you've talked about. The general rule in pronouns is that they often refer back to either the subject of a sentence or the most recent noun. But you can see that it's not an exact science and we can get a little bit confused in sentences like this. If you look at the second sentence, it reads, because of this. Now when we read this, what is it that we're actually referring to? Because of the fact that people are unhappy 
or because of the uniform. So we're not clear in this case as to what this means. We also go on to say people who have to wear it. And again, there's a couple of things here. People, or who are these people? Like people who have to wear it. Like are you talking about, you know, we assume you're talking about students, but why didn't you just say students? So watch out for vague terms like people. And you say who have to wear it. And when you say it, what are you talking about? Are you talking about uniform? Because that's not quite clear either. So you've got to watch out how you balance your relationship between the use of pronouns and what they refer to. I've also got this sentence here. So the Prime Minister should show more respect. Be careful when you start a sentence with what's called a connective or a conjunction. The word so implies that something has happened before this point. If that's not clear, then I'm not going to know exactly what this sentence is really all about. And this is just an example of the need for accurate, clear connectives. There is no previous sentence in this case, so the use of so as a connective doesn't make any sense. If we read on this example, the Prime Minister should show more respect to the opposition leader because he is trying his best. There's an issue here when we use the word he. Are we referring to the opposition leader or are we referring to the Prime Minister? So we have to be really careful in how we construct sentences to make sure that our pronouns are always really clearly linked to the noun that we're talking about. As an example of how we could have improved this writing, we read, Australian high schools should get rid of uniform as compulsory dress codes can cause unhappiness. In this case, you can see I've got rid of terms like they, which refer to the schools, and I've made it much clearer in who I'm talking about. Notice how I start the second sentence, due to this unhappiness. So rather than just saying due to this, I talk about unhappiness, which logically is the last thing I spoke about in the previous sentence, but I've added clarity by being specific. You'll notice I say students can be discouraged from attending school regularly. So rather than saying people who have to wear it, a word like people could apply to anyone, I've been more specific in my choice of pronoun in this case, and that makes it clearer. D3 is all about audience and context. Who are you writing for? Who are you writing to? And is the audience consistent throughout the writing? In this example, we read, we need to be more concerned about the threat of climate change and stop burying our head in the sand. If you continue acting to prevent pollution, then you are part of the solution. Now we get a bit confused here because these two sentences are so different. First, you start talking about we, needing to be more concerned about climate change. So we get this sense that the audience that you're writing to are people who don't care about climate change and need to change their attitude. But in the second sentence, you say, if you continue acting to prevent pollution. So all of a sudden, you're talking to people who are doing the right thing. So your audience has changed, and therefore it's unclear who it is that you're actually writing to. This can be a really common thing, particularly in discussions when the writer is trying to argue two points of view. It's really easy to get confused and all of a sudden change your audience, and that negatively affects the clarity of your writing. If we look at the solution I've put in place here, I've changed the topic in this case, Harry Potter fans have been thrilled with the recent release of Hogwarts Legacy, which was released this month on next generation consoles. Among the positives, the immersive world seems to be a highlight for many. Now, you'll notice in this case, the second sentence, when it talks about a highlight for many, that refers to the same people, the Harry Potter fans, who were mentioned in the previous sentence. Part of this relates to our D2, which is our accurate use of pronouns. But the other thing is that both sentences are targeted and speaking for the same group in this case. I'm not talking about people who liked the game in one sentence and then all of a sudden trying to pander to people who didn't like the game on the other sentence. We can see in this case it's really important for audience to be clear and consistent. Our final detractor for clarity is inconsistency in modality of language. Now this is almost its own subtopic and there's materials and resources and videos you can look to see this in more detail. I'll give just a couple of examples. Modality refers to the level of certainty, frequency and obligation in writing. 
So ask yourself how strong is your language and how appropriate is it for its context. Modality is never black and white. It's not always good to be really certain and it's not always good to be really uncertain. It depends on the context. So this is where you need to make sure that you've tempered your argument to suit what you're trying to say. In this example, we've got the sentence, we should stand up against bullying. And the modal term here is should. When we talk about obligation, there's a sense of how important it is for us to take action. And should suggests, oh yeah, like I should do it, but it doesn't necessarily make it seem like it's urgent or immediate. Think about what we could have said instead. Similarly, the second sentence says, taxpayers never get the benefit of their sacrifice. Now that's quite a heavy, exaggerated statement, and it might have some weight in the right circumstances, but is it true? Well, the reality is that taxpayers do benefit, but they might feel like they don't always benefit, or they might feel like they don't benefit very often. So in this case, the modality is perhaps too high for the circumstance that's being written. The last thing I've written here is, this will result in disaster. Now, it's all about context, and in this context, that may very well be the case, but we can see that the modal term will adds a really high level of certainty to this. As an alternative, we can see how I could change the language here to make it less certain or to lower the obligation or frequency. We need to stand up against bullying sounds like it's better suited to this topic because it doesn't sound like something that we should have the option to ignore or not ignore if it's really important. Taxpayers rarely get the benefit of their sacrifice sounds better tempered in this case. We still get our point across, but we don't exaggerate what we're saying this may result in disaster, might also be a better alternative in this case. If you've received D4 feedback in your writing, it's likely because the modal tempering of your writing hasn't quite suited the context of which you're trying to argue. So think about how you could soften or strengthen the language to better suit the point that you're trying to make. This has been our video on clarity. Make sure you check out the other videos to look at other ways that you can improve the quality of your writing.